So now we know that we do have uh, two types two types of hormones that are produced by the posterior pituitary which is oxytocin and ADH. The next point that we need to note is the fact that these are peptides, they are very short peptides and they have structural similarities. As you can see for oxytocin you do have um, almost a similar amino acids, the one that makes up uh, antidiuretic hormone except for two positions. So in oxytocin you do have isoleucine and leucine in uh, these two positions whereas in ADH or antidiuretic hormone you have phenylalanine and arginine instead. But except for these two positions in all other positions the amino acids are similar and this gives a partial functional similarities um, um, between these two hormones. That means oxytocin can somehow perform some of the functions of ADH and ADH can somehow perform some of the functions of oxytocin. So what are the biological functions of antidiuretic hormone? The biological function of antidiuretic hormone, one of it has to do with uh, um, um, regulating the osmolarity of the extracellular fluid. And in this one, you only need minute quantities of ADH, meaning that you don't need a lot of ADH to bring about this effect. And this is actually happening within the kidneys. And within the kidneys, we do have the functional units known as the nephrons. And within the nephron, we have the distal convoluted tubules as well as the collecting ducts. And this is where you have the hormonal effect. And this is where you have the effect of ADH. And ADH will be synthesized by the hypothalamus released by the posterior pituitary down to the circulation and it will activate a second messenger system and this is a Daniel cyclic, cyclic AMP second messenger system. Cyclic AMP once activated will phosphorylate the proteins that makes up the vesicles within um, the distal and the collecting duct and these proteins are known as aquaporins. So the aquaporins will be phosphorylated. When they are phosphorylated they actually become paros, that means they allow move, uh, uh, movement of a lot of water from the nephron back to the extracellular fluid to regulate changes in osmolarity. So this is the main function of antidiuretic hormone and this is called antidiuresis. You see, diuresis is the opposite. Antidiuresis is drawing water away from the nephron. That means um, the urine will become concentrated anti so that means you don't allow a lot of water to get into diuresis that means a lot of water gets into the urine and the urine become diluted so this is one effect of antidiuretic hormone and that's why it's called antidiuretic hormone but then uh, you have another biological effect of antidiuretic hormone and for this reason antidiuretic hormone is called vasopressin meaning that it presses the vessels and it causes vasoconstriction and what happened is um, um, you do have stretch receptors within the right atria and this, uh, the right atrium and the stretch receptors within the right atrium are stimulated when the amount of blood volume is normal or high because the right atrium will stretch. So when they stretch, the stretch receptors are stimulated and when the stretch receptors are stimulated, they inhibit synthesis and production of ADH by the hypothalamus. So when the blood volume is no more high, there's no production of ADH, meaning that there's no effect of ADH. So when the blood volume falls, someone is bleeding too much or anything happened within the body and then the blood volume falls, that means the blood that goes back into the right atrium is small. The amount of blood that is going back uh, reduces, becomes small. In so doing, that means the stretch receptors are not stretched. That means they are not stimulated. If the stretch receptors are not stimulated, the inhibition that goes to the hypothalamus is actually removed, is not there. That means the hypothalamus can synthesize ADH and also the posterior pituitary can release the ADH, gets into the circulation, come down to the blood vessels and cause vasoconstriction to restore blood pressure. Because what is happening is when the blood pressure, when the blood volume is low, the blood pressure is also low. 
So when the when 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 the pressure is very low, the functions of the body uh, cannot happen normally. So it has to be restored to its normal values, and this is what is happening: low blood volume, no stretch. So there's no stimulation of stretch receptors. If there's no stimulation of stretch receptor, that means there's no inhibition of synthesis and production release of ADH. ADH is released, and here we call it vasopressin. Comes down, come down to the blood vessels, cause vasoconstriction, and restores blood pressure.